Well, I'll try and sum it up the best I can. Um, grew up in the 70s. I had two older brothers, brothers and sisters. Um, it was all the hippie drugs atmosphere thing, you know, whole nine yards. And they were the ones that uh, were basically leading me, and I chose to follow in their footsteps. And never really knew anything about Jesus Christ or, or church, although, you know, the, the neighbor lady always encouraged me to go to Sunday school. And I just, you know, I was busy doing other things. And uh, um, at about 25 or 26, after experiencing just about every drug that's out there possible, uh, struggled with cocaine for a long time, and uh, come to find out that alcohol was my biggest problem. When I started, once I started drinking alcohol, you know, everything else uh, just came right along with it. Behaviors and everything. Uh, for me, I, I got involved in uh, some Narcotics Anonymous and some AA groups and actually put together 13 years of which I now call sobriety um, because it basically really wasn't recovery and uh, uh, they talk about the realization uh, coming here tonight the realization for me and it it didn't happen till this afternoon um, is I realized you know I used to say to myself I've been clean for 13 years I struggle to try and get my family to do things I want them to do. I try to be a leader, you know, uh, but what I was doing was I have chosen all these idols in this idolatry in my life. And I was, you know, I had dream catchers and things that I like to call, these are spiritual things that will help me get closer to God and help me to, to, to be a spiritual person. Um, and I'm finding, you know, uh, that lately I'm, I'm able to take that, that punch to the ego a whole lot better than I used to be able to take it. it. It used to devastate me. It used to be like I thought, you know, I thought I was coming along in my faith, and and I thought, you know, I always like to think about where I'm at, and my and it's 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 silly, really. It's a it's a journey. It's it's not a race. And uh, but after those 13 years, you know, I got tore down and was marching up and down the back porch of my house uh, on a three-day drunk, uh, cussing my wife and everybody around me and life and God and the entire thing. So uh, as I broke down that afternoon, I, uh, I called my nephew, who was a member of, uh, of Calvary Baptist Church, and, and he's been uh, saved from alcohol. And his wife, is they're, they're both just the, the light of the world. Uh, and there's seven kids as well. They're all church members, and they all have Christ in them. And uh, he was the one person I called, you know, and I called him that day and uh, um, said, you're going to need about a three-hour nap. We'll start with that, and then we'll go over and see the pastor. So, And I chose to do that. And that day, what happened to me was we cried, and I poured my guts out there to him uh, that afternoon at that table, and I surrendered to the Lord. And from that day, even though I didn't understand it, I felt uncomfortable around people at church. I was so judgmental in my mind and thinking that that. I was like a cat on a hot tin roof sitting in church, but you know what? I went, and I went again, and I went Sunday, and I got involved in the Sunday school that morning. I got involved in some addiction ministries through the church, um, the Celebrate Recovery program, um, and I've stayed involved in it. And uh, October October 8th, uh, this year was my one year saved and sober anniversary, so just a few days ago. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. All great for you. Um, but, but what, what has happened to me just in these last few days, and, and for me, I don't know what it is. The Lord works in very little incremental changes, but when they come about, I get, uh, I'm just overwhelmed with the joy of the hair standing up on my arms, but um, is, is, is to recognize the very first R. Okay, see, I got the first R. I'm, I'm happy about that because I recognize where I've been in my life and all the, you know, I've got to go home and like get trinkets and Dream catchers and books and yeah, I know. and I, I knew something of that. The Lord told me something of that because I used to have all this Indian stuff, which was my little place to for my spiritual worship, as I called it. And it wasn't uh, probably a week into that I just heard somebody say something, and I just cleared that whole thing off. And you know, the only thing there is a picture of my brother who I lost um, a week before I decided to turn my life over to God through alcohol. So. Um, um, what I got to say is praise the Lord and hallelujah because uh, there are moments of joy that come over me that I cannot even begin to uh, express of what's 
what's going on inside that my ear, hair stands up on my arms and there's moments where there's just a peace that comes over me that's that's beautiful and wonderful and uh, what I'm trying to remember is that you don't you're not always on the mountaintop you know the the idea is to come down from there and go out into this world and, and try and give that to somebody else and share that with somebody so that's that's what I'm trying to do through whatever thing it is I I, I try just to say yes if somebody says can you help me yeah okay I mean, and I found that if I just throw myself in there then then uh, as uncomfortable as it might be or new people or whatever I'm learning to yeah. Get through those little things yeah. that, that are you're not, you're not sensitive. God's, God's adventure. Yes, absolutely. Amen. You're not God's Amen. adventure. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm proud of you, Dad. Well, thank you. I hope you're coming tomorrow. Yes, I am coming tomorrow. Yeah, because you're going to get through a lot of stuff tomorrow. Hallelujah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay, all right. All right, one, two, three. Freedom!